When you train, you're not building tissue during that time, you're actually breaking tissue down. So what's super important is that you then go into feeding periods, following training consistently during, you know, during this whole training period to make sure that you are ingesting protein to then help repair and recover the tissue so that way you can go back into training the next time, be recovered, and then outperform yourself over time. You know, if you don't get 30 grams of protein in within 30 minutes of your workout, you've totally lost your gains or your progress from that workout. What's up guys, this is Matt from Raw Nutrition. I am one of the owners of the brand and I've also had the opportunity to be a coach in the bodybuilding industry since 2011, 2012. I went into coaching full-time in 2013 and what we wanna to continue to do is just continue to give back to you guys in an educational manner on this platform and let you guys know, you know about all things, you know, whether it's experience related that I've gone through during my time as a coach, my thought process on you know whether it's training or nutrition and today we're going to break down protein in essence what is protein why is it important how should you look at your protein intake what numbers are important to understand when it comes to how much you're ingesting and just overall a better understanding of protein so to break it down simply for you guys, protein and fats are the two things from a macronutrient standpoint that are essential in the body. All right, I wanna start there. Carbohydrates, I personally feel are essential for a healthy metabolism, but they're not essential for life, all right? And that's a big difference there. Fats are super important, essential for life, and today we're gonna to talk about protein. So when it comes to protein intake, what I personally feel, and the, and the easiest way to break this down for you, is that protein intake needs to be based off of lean body mass and not total body mass. That's another big mistake that people make. So when you look at your protein requirements for the day, you wanna be feeding your muscle, you wanna be feeding your recovery, you wanna be feeding your body's ability to recover, you don't need to be feeding your fat cells, all right? So when it comes to looking at, Matt, how much protein should I ingest in a day? What you wanna look at is your lean body mass, not your total body weight. That's the biggest difference that I can say and where a lot of people go wrong is they're calculating their protein requirements on a daily basis based off a of total body weight and not off their lean body mass. So for example, in a contest prep scenario, the weight that you are on stage or the weight that you should be on stage when it comes to you being in true contest prep shape, true condition, that's how you should calculate your protein requirements. So let's say for that individual, they're 150 pounds on stage, 160 pounds on stage. From that point, I would then err to go from 1.25 pounds to 1.75 pounds per pound of lean body mass. All right, start there. And then really when it comes to how, you know, how do I ingest this? How do I take this in throughout the day? I would ideally space this out with at least four meals throughout the day and then also space it out around what your daily requirements look like from a training perspective. So obviously first thing in the morning, I would ingest some type of protein. I personally, what I like to do is I like to utilize some essential amino acid supplementation first thing in the morning. I get my cardio out of the way, but what I'm doing is I'm at least giving myself some insurance and covering myself while increasing muscle protein synthesis and then also decreasing muscle protein breakdown during that cardio session. And then I start to include my protein from whole food sources or whey protein isolates throughout the day. So very simply put, if you need to include, you know, any or ingest like 200 grams of protein per day, I would at least break that into, it doesn't have to be, you know, there is no set magic number of how much protein your body can digest at one time, but I would at least break it into like 40 to 50 gram increments and then divide that throughout the day. Um, and then when it comes to protein types, the most important thing that I think that you guys need to consider when it comes to protein types is ingesting the type of protein that your body best digests that doesn't cause uh, any type of gas, bloating, distension. Those are all super important. So your typical bodybuilding foods of egg whites, that is something that a lot of people have trouble digesting, especially on a, con a consistent basis. So be careful of that. You know, obviously here we are inside the raw HQ. You know, we sell a lot of protein. But people, again, with consistent use can have issues with whey protein, 
specifically with whey, you know, any type of concentrates or blends. So again, be, be aware of that. You know, there's been several times in my history here as even one of the owners of the brand where I've not been able to utilize our whey to the level that I would like to or just consume it consistently at all, sp specifically because I had internal digestive issues that I needed to work through. So typically, if you have digestive issues, digestive problems that are not addressed, there's going to be common things that cause that to flare up. Egg whites are one of them. Whey protein in specific forms are another type. But when you're looking at whey protein types, one of the most important factors to consider is that it is a true isolate. It's not a concentrate, it's not a blend, it's 100% isolate, that's super important. So really when it, you know, when it comes down to all this guys is I would really look at and consider your lean body mass, get your protein intake consumption on a daily base, basis based off of your lean body mass, from that point, then look at, okay, what does my day look like? When are my training windows? And that's another thing, I wanna to touch on training window really quick. There is no magic window on the back side of training or on the front side of training that you need to absolutely hit. You know, If you don't get 30 grams of protein in within 30 minutes of your workout, you've totally lost your gains or your progress from that workout. Obviously, what really matters here is consistency of the, over the long term, consistently hitting and meeting your protein requirements on a daily basis, that's what's gonna matter most. So what I would really focus on is just the big picture, okay? Don't stress the minutia, don't really get you know, so stressed about the details of you know, within 30 minutes of my workout, I have to consume protein. I think the more relaxed you are and the more you see the big picture when it comes to, am I meeting my protein requirements for the day? Am I ingesting sources of protein that sit well with my body? Those are what's most important. And then consistently doing that over the long haul, all right? And really just to kind of wrap this up for you guys, protein is, you know, essentially amino acids are the building blocks of protein. What this is gonna help you do is it's gonna help your body repair tissue. When you train, you're not building tissue during that time, you're actually breaking tissue down. So what's super important is that you then go into feeding periods following training consistently during, you know, during this whole training period to make sure that you are ingesting protein to then help repair and recover the tissue so that way you can go back into training the next time, be recovered, and then outperform yourself over time. That really is the goal and utilizing protein, which is an essential micronutrient, macronutrient, macronutrient in the body. Um, it's an important part to make sure that you are getting the protein requirements that you need to help build, facilitate repair and then obviously ultimately recover and then get better over time. <music>